things changed quite a bit for us once we had Jacob. At the delivery, first thing we noticed, a little hole there in his uh, lip and gum. But, you know, later on we find out a cleft is really just, it's cosmetic. His uh, Akbar scores, or whatever they're called, showed that he was a bit floppy. When Tori was three months old, she had her first seizure. My wife rushed downstairs. Oh, Pam, she's like wiggling her arms and her legs. It was a horrible sight. We took her to the hospital right away. We left the hospital after two days with the doctors not knowing. And I remember coming home and putting the covers over my head and saying, I don't want to wake up. There's nothing I can do. With Jacob, there were many things that were out of whack. In about five months, he seems very floppy still. And then we started to see doctors and specialists. They started physical therapy. Literally, the PT would sit him up and he'd fall over. And he'd sit him up and he'd fall over. We could tell that after a certain amount of time, nothing was happening. We went through for the first two and a half years of his life of people telling us what was wrong but giving us absolutely no hope as to what can be done about it. I was screaming, she is worse than Helen Keller. She cannot see, she cannot hear. She's yet to be diagnosed. We were told when she was 11 months old, your daughter will probably just sit there and do nothing the rest of her life. Why is she like this so we can treat it? There's nothing I can do. We just know for now she's going to have seizures, so let's put her on medicine. We'd walk away after waiting three months to see this specialist, and time after time after time, we were disappointed. The pediatrician basically said to me, who we love, you know, she said, just take him home and love him, whoever he is. And I'll never forget that day because I left crying. I said, there's got to be more to do for this child. At the end of one year of basically drawing blood and sending out tests, the last doctor we saw, who it took three months just to get to see even, said, we figure out about a third of the kids and their issues, and another third we get eventually. The last third, we never figure out. And she said, your kid's already knocking on that last door. It just felt hopeless. There was a seminar, and I dragged my husband, you have to go, this is a good place. In an hour of being in that room, we knew we were in the right place. Once I got in there and started hearing, it was very eye-opening and compelling. They were talking to us in a way very, very different than the traditional doctors. Keep in mind, my wife was a special needs uh, teacher. Her sister's a physical therapist. Her other sister's an occupational therapist. None of them had heard almost anything that you hear at the seminar. And they were explaining that what you have and what most of the other children had is a brain injury. And the best part was they had answers for us. And they were the first people that actually said, we've got a solution to the problem. So we wound up having enough information after the three days, we set up an appointment with the Family Hope Center. So it begins. Family Hope was a pretty amazing experience for us. Mobility and speech were his biggest challenges, and those are governed by midbrain cortex ponds. You know, this is all things that I learned. What happened when we came to Family Hope Center, they said, you know, we have a way to go to the root of the problem. When you give her seizure medicine, you're just kind of covering over the problem. They taught us how to get him to move. First thing was get him on his belly because basically he needs to be able to move his body. Our son who we would put on the floor and we could come back an hour later he'd be in the exact same spot on his back because he wasn't able to move. The movement of creeping and crawling grows the lower parts of the brain. And where are the babies? In the bouncy seat, in the stroller. The kid can't be on the floor, it's dirty. So they don't get a chance to crawl. So they wound up saying, we would like to gradually ramp her out of having the seizure meds and ramp in a program that's designed to specifically help the part of her brain that's injured. You know, Matt said, okay, anti-roll vest, simple PVC pipe, put it on his body so he can't flip over. 
was brilliant. Got him on his belly. Matt and Carol said, okay, put a toy a couple feet in front of him. Let's try to motivate him. All of a sudden, he's moving. If I didn't know any better, I would have taken our daughter, who's kind of weak, and just made her look comfortable. Family Hope Center's opposite. You gotta make her work even harder because she needs it that much more. So it was a different mindset. We weren't sure what we were getting. Family Hope Center wasn't saying, oh, we promise this, we guarantee that. It's not a hype thing. And don't you know, after 14 weeks, she was both seizure-free and med-free. Part of the difference also that's appreciated about Family Hope Center is they're all about where are we and how can we get past here, not my kid has this, my kid will never do that. The movement of the cross pattern helps to organize the brain. Crawling on his belly became creeping on his hands and knees. One day, he popped up to all fours. When he started to crawl on his hands and his knees, his head was on the floor. So I said to Matt, what do we do? He said, easy, we put him on the steps. When you're on the steps, you gotta pick your head up to see where you're going. Literally within the matter of a few days, bingo, up comes his head. You know, I mean, it works. This is again another example of where they have the experience. In the beginning we fought it a little bit, what, you know, and I had a lot of fear in the beginning, but you know, after time goes by, it's been five years now that we've worked with them, it's like, give it to me. If you remember really vividly one day when uh, after meeting with Family Hope, they said, okay, he's ready. There's no need for you now to pick him up and move him from one side of the house to the other. And I can remember that saying, okay, Jakey, time for lunch, come on in. A minute or two later, he'd be in the kitchen. And I was like, one day going from disability to ability. Our daughter was basically blind. The path to her brain is interrupted. Neurologically, she's blind. Family Hope Center said, well, her eyeball is fine. So we can help you by a lot of hard work, help you create a new pathway from her eye to her brain. And so the first time Tori was evaluated, I got annoyed actually because Carol Newell was shining a light in her eyes and she shone light in her eyes once, twice, three times, 10 times, 11. 12 times, at the 12th time, her pupils constricted. Oh my gosh, I'm like, are you kidding me? That actually happened? And the therapy Family Hope Center had said is, take the flashlight and shine it, not directly in her eyes, but across her eyes, basically helping her pupil go small, big, small, big. Their pupils now are, they just happen. We had to make her track a red light. And by golly, she was tracking after, you know, a few days, a few weeks, she's tracking. Whereas before, she just stared at his face looking like this. After that, our new task was to show her black and white. One picture and say lips. And then another picture, cat, and say, which one is the cat? And the first time they told me to do this, I, I was laughing hysterically. I'm like, she'll never get that. And Carol was just sitting there, seriously waiting for me to be done my laughing attack. And uh, then I realized she was serious, and I started weeping. <laughs> you are, you're serious. She's going to be able to do this, you know. And Carol said, "Yeah, there's no reason to believe that she can't do that." And now she is doing it. I mean, to have a blind child who's seen, and that's just one piece of our daughter. I so believe in this program. Family Hope gave us plenty of reason to hope. All along the way, we've gotten answers. There is no doubt that God is using the people of Family Hope Center. Not just because they're compassionate or well-meaning people, but they really know what they're doing. And they get the worst of the worst. They get it after you've tried everything else, and they still have the results that are fantastic. Certainly our results have exceeded our expectations. You know, we were told he was never gonna walk. If it wasn't for this program, he would never have walked. He's just a totally different child. It's been the answers from the Family Hope Center, and we've gotten support, and we've gotten so much hope. And the results are showing. They're showing big time. If we were still waiting, it's not an understatement to say our daughter could easily be dead right now.
our daughter, she can't even speak yet. She makes sounds, but she can't speak. But her life is speaking volumes.